Uh, just me and Mark at the moment. And Matt is just joining in at the bottom of the screen. Um, so I'll bring Matt in in just a moment. And we'll, first of all, we need apologies from Matt as to why he's late, first of all. So, Matt, why are you late? Who, me? Yes, why are you late? I, I'm not late. Look at the time. It's dead on look. 8 o'clock. Hmm. I, I would consider that late, to be honest with you. Uh, what time do we start? We start at eight. So if one of your so, people turned up, like your class starts at three and they turned up coming through the door at three, would that be acceptable? I'd be very grateful, to be honest. <laughs> Sorry, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, anything earlier that. than ten past three is a, is a dream. <laughs> Good point, well made. Uh, Mark, good evening to you. We've just been talking Hello. about your new your new studio that's in progress behind you. Yeah, I can sort of move the thing and show people a little bit. I've got, got some shirts Ooh, going on over here. <laughs> and I've got some flags behind me and some books. It's all, it's all starting to come together. Yeah, it's getting there slowly. So that'll be, we were just saying, that's going to be the, it's building up to be the SLP studio. That's um, correct, yeah. Yeah, SLP headquarters. Um, so, Matt, why were you late? Um, I, I was doing fatherly duties, checking on my son, and um, put, pouring a beer. <laughs> okay. Do you know what's even better? You get your son to pour the beer for you. That's a, that's He's on Fortnite. Step, that's not going to happen. Okay, okay, no problem. I've never understood that, to be honest with you. Um, um, right, we're going to be joined at some point by the Wigan runner and Stu at some point. But they, they are people, you just you don't dictate to them. They turn up when they want. Whereas Matt, <laughs> as you said earlier on at the weekend, you are my bitch, so I tell you when you have to turn up. <laughs> is pretty much what, what you declared uh, earlier. Um, there we go. Darren Clark says, can you give Hindpool Tigers under sevens a shout in Barrow? Yeah, there you go. You've done it. Um, right, let's talk about some some rugby-related things rather than uh, nonsense about Matt. Mark, you were at Wakefield. Matt, you were at Wakefield as well, weren't you, with your dad? Mark, give us your, your thoughts on, on first victory in a few years at Wakefield, grinding it out and getting that sort of that monkey away that we finally, finally won at Wakefield. Yeah, I mean... At the ground, I was buzzing until I learned that Liam Marshall tapped it three metres off the mark. I was absolutely <laughs> buzzing. But um, no, it, to be honest, the, I'd done a, a sort of charity, I say run, I, I walked a half marathon in the morning. So my hips were shot. So I just found the first bar I could see to lean against and it was right behind the dugouts. And I had the drum and all that behind me and around me. So the atmosphere was fantastic for me. And um, I think we gave them every chance in the first half with all our errors. We gave them every chance in the second half with all our penalties. But they, they weren't good enough, and we were, is is the way I'd, I'd sum it up. And that, that Marshall try, as you're in the ground, you know, with the absolutely diabolical viewing lines that you get as an away fan at, at that um, pitch, um, you're... I couldn't tell that he didn't tap it in the middle, so I was just absolutely buzzing and bouncing. It was it was a really great atmosphere and a, and a, a well deserved win. We were definitely the better side, definitely the better side. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll ask you about the attacking intent or lack of that that was sort of perceived Matt, in just a second. But I think what's really rich coming from sort of Wakefield fans is the fact that the question in where Marshall tapped it, yeah, he didn't tap it in the right place. But isn't this one of the grounds where the markings don't even make sense anywhere? The measurements between the markings aren't accurate. So it's like, yeah, all right, it wasn't in the middle of the pitch, but oh, come on, get the rest of your pitch accurate before you start saying that. I saw a Wakefield fan page showing something that was trying to explain that there was different rules for one and different rules for the other, but the clip they'd used to show different rules for Wakefield was Morgan Escray tapping it two marks, two <laughs> metres off the centre mark anyway. Well, so it's what, just a Wigan thing, isn't it? He's a Wigan player. So, uh, Matt, your thoughts on the game? It, we seem to struggle in an... Again, it seemed to be a defensive-led victory, which which seems to have been our theme since Matty Pete returned, which you know I think it's important to... To sort of mention as well that perhaps the impact that Matty Pete might have made behind the scenes. Um, it wasn't this free flowing sort of attacking rugby that we've seen in glimpses, but it perhaps wasn't the the occasion because the, the weather played obviously a big part in that as well on Sunday. That's that's a huge thing because the the weather was was typical mad Yorkshire weather. Um, 
And that ball must have been like a bar of soap. I mean, I, the number of knock-ons that, that we saw, it, well, was, it was can ridiculous. Can I just stop you on the, on the soap thing? Because <laughs> Mel says, uh, horrible ground, no soap or hot water. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> well, that's because it was all on the pitch. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Matt, go on. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I think that it wasn't... A, as soon, as soon as that rain started, it was never going to be a game where you saw kind of those thrilling, free-flowing attack um, styles. And yet, we did from Wigan. I mean, that the, the, the Marshall try when he was just like whizzed right out. To, I think it was a George Williams pass, wasn't it? Straight out to the wing. Um, and, and this business about the, the tap, I, I take issue with you. Them. I don't think it was three metres. It was probably two and a bit. And <laughs> that, six or seven, was it? That ground is so chunky anyway. You know, mm-hmm. it, I, I find it... Ooh, I, I was irritated. I was irritated, quite frankly. My, I think and was... the fact that they, they got a try from a dodgy kick and from a forward pass. Woo! Aren't they great? Mark, I think it might have been you on, on Twitter that mentioned about the uh, something about the, the tap. I can't remember what it what you were saying about it. it was something about you would be if that was Wigan, you would be more concerned the fact that the Wakefield players were complaining to the referee rather than making the attempt to actually make the tackle. I've just given you I, I credit for a tweet that wasn't you. I didn't say that on Twitter, but I think I said it on the Super League pod this week. Say though. <laughs> but um, what I did say was I I, I can cop it when. Um, a coach criticises a referee for making a mistake, which got Mikulowski in that occasion. What I can't cop is when they exaggerate it and double the des- the distance that he was away from the mark, because that doesn't help anyone, does it? <laughs> I'm, I'm really concerned. I obviously put these these comments on from people, and and Stephen Roberts have just his profile picture always makes me laugh when I pop that on with the with the massive <laughs> moustache on there. But then I didn't really. I'm going to put Andy's back on. Like, what is that? Like, is that some kind of character? The character that I just have never seen before. Like, what is that mask? And is that a mask or is that a filter? If you could let us know, Andy, because that's really <laughs> disturbing me a little bit. Yeah, get um, it off the screen. I mean, his comments. Yeah, are, yeah I'll get it off. Can we have the okay. picture and keep the words? <laughs> is, is Andy just getting ready for purge night? <laughs> yeah, possibly, possibly. Um, right, Morgan Escare, the, the sort of person that we've we've brought ourselves around to talk about, or I have on on the show over the past few weeks. Uh, Matt, you're. An, yeah, your initial thoughts on on his performance? He was involved both ends, I guess. You know, he seemed to be a mistake, perhaps, or, or a liability for some of Wigan's tries, but also contributed to Wakefield and some of their best passages. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that um, w- when he's on your team, he he can come up with kind of those little moments of brilliant brilliance. When he's not on your team, it's a little shit, isn't he? Um, yeah, and I, yes. I think <laughs> yes, that... <laughs> that's what we we saw the other side of the friendly snake. What yeah. what we saw was that he is he is a slippery customer, but ultimately flawed, like like Shylock. Talking of people that aren't flawed at all, I'm going to bring the Wigan runner onto the screen in just a second as well. So, uh, yes, y- yeah. Y- Good evening, Matthew. Don't be confused about the conversation that's happening. We will bring you in when it's a little bit more sane, so don't worry, but it's nice to see you on, on the screen. Uh, Mark, your thoughts on, on Morgan Escrow's performance? Did he do enough to convince you that he has a future at Wigan? He, he, he played like Morgan Escrow. He, he he avoided going for some high, high balls. He played at a couple <laughs> of balls inexplicably, one of them giving us a a dropout, which was very kind. It helped us keep the pressure on. He defensively was out of position a couple of times, but attackingly, he was a live wire and he was a, probably their biggest threat a, a lot of times. You know, he had a great role in their forward pass build up that he took off Tanganoa for their um, second try, which we should have stopped anyway. And he was fantastic in that move. He wasn't responsible for the forward pass. Um, and he put in a nice kick for the, for the last try, which we have to assume the officials got correct because we couldn't see it from the sidelines because, you, like I said, it's it's a horrible ground to actually see the pitch from from the away stand, uh, the away side. But um, yeah, it, it was classic Morgan Escray. He's a very good Super League player. He's just not a top class Super League player, and I like him, but I like other players better. Now we've got four people on screen. 
Like we can't possibly we can't fit anybody else on the screen. The software doesn't like. And then Stu comes and joins us. Yes, I can see you, Stu, and I think you can hear me. I'll bring you on in just a moment, Stu. Uh, you just turn up when you want. I've already given uh, Matt a hard time. I'm not going to give Matthew a hard time because he is the Wigan runner. And he's sort of exempt from that. Matthew, good evening. Would you like to tell us what day you're up to? Uh, first of yeah. all, that, that's the thing that we're always interested in. I can't see you though, Sean. First of all, that's, that's the best way. You. That's the best way because you can't see what we're doing. Okay, no problem then. Um, yeah, thank, thank. Sorry, I'm late as per usual. By the way, then that was. You can be bad. as late as you want, Matthew. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, yeah. So, Have you two um, got something you want to tell us? He's the Wigan <laughs> runner. He can do what he wants. <laughs> I you can do what he wants as well, to be fair. <laughs> we'll find out. In a second. He's, he's got a Stu, right, Stu, can, I can I do what Stu I want? Up. I'm going to take a photograph of this because I can see Stu. Up. Can, can, can everybody hear Stu then? No, nope. this is great no. for everyone else. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Stu, shut up. You're in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he's saying anyway. You need that then. Subtitles. Anyway, what number well, are you up to, Matthew? Uh, so, so far, I've run for 976 days. Tonight, I'll be 977 when I do it. After Straight after this tonight, I'm going to do it. It's just started going dark now, but it'll be dark by the time we're on. And it'll be 977 tonight. It's, uh, we say it every time. It's incredible and ridiculous in an equal measure. You're in- you were doing your work in schools. Um, Do we say week, that every, that every well? time? I'm sorry, as Ellen Parfit so. says, that was just a noise. <laughs> There's two people at once. <laughs> yeah, shut up, Matt. I don't know why I said that. It's all right. I, I can mute Matt, so it's all right. If he does it again, I'll swap him for, for Stu. Um, in fact, that's probably a better thing, actually. I'm just going to take you off, Matt, because you're doing my editing. Bring Stuart. Right, sorry. You, you work in schools for. Tell us where have you been this week? Oh yeah, I went in uh, Castle Hill in Hindley yesterday. Brilliant school. Uh, did an assembly about running an exercise, and then we all did the daily mile as well, which was good. It's really good getting involved with the kids in Wigan and doing things like that. Yeah, it's fantastic. And we've got we're going to another school as well uh, next week as well. Excellent. And do you want to tell us a little bit about this week's competition? Yeah, I've got my tickets here. So we've got two tickets for the Wigan versus Catalan game on Friday night. And I'm doing the draw a day early this week, so it's going to be tomorrow on Thursday at midday. We'll do that. So still time to enter Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Um, Yeah, just like and share it to be with a chance. Excellent. Stu, I'm going to, I've just found a way that we can actually get all five on screen, but it will mean, Stu, that you will be audio only in just a second. So just so that everybody can see your pretty little face, you're on the screen at the minute, and then I'll swap you with Matt because, you know, Matt, Matt's got a quiff and stuff. Better <laughs> looking, he says in my ear. That they were, they were Matt's words that he just said in my ear. Stu, right, first of all, say something. Dodgy, so, dodgy talk to share, because that's all I'll say to that. <laughs> <laughs> Stu, uh, your, give us your thoughts first of all while you're on screen of, of the Wakefield victory and, and, and what that means to Wigan in terms of setting us up in second place Scrappy um, bad weather conditions two points is two points that's what we want there you go, I know Matthew, Ma- Matthew can't hear you so don't worry Matthew he's not saying anything I- I'll translate he said dead good um, Wigan two points and then you have to do a little bit. Well. Scrappy, yeah. Can you scrappy do any conditions, conditions weather, you know, under the day, two points is two points. We want biz- coming up to business end. Brilliant. Yeah. All good. Excellent. Ticked all what are your thoughts on on uh, Mr. Samet being uh, being injured against you? I know you you do the single uh, you're the own well, you and your mother in the in well, the Malta listen, fan club. Listen, listen. You know, it can't be up there. These things happen, it's rugby, innit? You know what I mean? It's uh Let's just say, uh, let's get him right. If he goes to Halifax, good luck to the block. Do you know what I mean? We've got a good replacement so in Bevan French, so there you go. And we'll we'll p- perhaps get to see one of his potential replacements uh, this week, Harry Smith as well. Stu, thank you. I'm going to take you off screen. I'm no going to put you on audio only, so you don't mm-hmm. worry. Nobody can see you in a second, uh, but I can, so don't do anything that you wouldn't want me to see. Okay? <laughs> right, no, I'm going to take you off screen, and I'm no, going to... No. 
bring the, the sort of the self pruning uh, Matt McCauley back on screen, and I'm going to try and get right. How do we? Right, Matt, you're back. Excellent. Right, Mark, Harry Smith in the 19-man squad this week. Do you expect to see him play? Um, I kind of hope we get to see him play. I think we learn uh, something we learned on Sunday is that Bevan French's best position isn't in the halves. Um, it, it didn't have much impact on, on the game. So uh, hopefully he uh, Harry Smith gets to be on the bench and one of the wingers or centres maybe misses out on the squad. But, but it'd be nice to see him have a go. It's a good opportunity, isn't it? Certainly to get him in and around the 19-man squad in the first place is very good because yeah. he hasn't really had that chance yet. So he'll get to go through can, the can whole I just ask, game is, day routine. Is Hardacre stuff. in the squad? Yeah, he is, isn't yeah. he? Is, is, is Harry Smith right, okay. Yeah. I, um, I must admit, I didn't see his name. My my mistake, sorry. I, I just assumed that maybe Bevan French would go straight in at full-back. But, uh, I'm I'm gonna, Stu, Stu, can you just say something sort of like appropriate just to check that we can still hear you? Good afternoon, good evening, good night. Did anybody hear that? Yeah, I heard him. Yeah, okay. Just Matthew good. that. I didn't. Okay, well, it's very appropriate. Right. Yeah, that's fine. You don't you don't want to hear oh, what he said anyway. So so Stu, you can contribute still. You are no on audio problem. only. No um right, so Matt, Harry Smith coming into the squad. Um would you like I, I see I see this as being a bit like the Ethan Havard sort of bringing him into the squad earlier on in the season, giving him that opportunity, then taking him perhaps away from that environment for the rest of the season. The problem that it creates is, would you like to see him get that opportunity at home against Catalans or or do you think it's a case of Wigan have to play their best 17 from now right through to the playoffs? I, I, well, I'm hoping he's on the bench and once we've got over the top of Catalans, then he'll come on and, and get some decent game time. Um, he's, he's clearly a very, very talented kid, isn't he? Is, is he Witness? Is he from Witness? Have That's I Mark. just dreamt that up? Mark Shepard. Maybe he's not. I'm not, I'm yeah. not sure. Um, I, I, what I, I do know is that he's, he's had some great opportunities to develop his game already, hasn't he, this year with a lot of game yeah. time at Swinton after he really impressed for the Great Britain uh, Academy, well, the England Academy side, sorry, at the end of last year. He played in those games mm-hmm. and was man of the match, I think, in one of the games and had a really good hand in, in those performances and we've seen some of those other players from that side come through at other clubs this year so um, it's about time we showed what our young stars from that side can do as well he's a he's a skillful kid he's, he's, he's really come on as well because when he first his first year at the 19s I, I wasn't sure um, about some aspects of his play but he's, he's really matured into a play with a really controlling kicking game I think yeah there you so go so is, is he gonna is he gonna leapfrog the likes of oh, yeah. Woods yeah, I, I would say so. I mean, personally, I think I, I think Woods is a good, is, yeah. I think for, for me personally, I think Woods and Shorrock sort of fall into that Escaray category of they, they'll be good Super League mm-hmm. players. They, they won't be Wigan players, I don't think, which is unfortunate. But I think Josh Woods had a great opportunity last year. I don't think he could have done any more really, other than mm-hmm. you know that that's his game and, and that's how he played. And you know, I think we'll always remember that drop goal that he got against Warrington, mm-hmm. won't we? And and, and but. I think the the season in the championship has, has suited him well, and I think he would be a good Super League player. I just don't think um, the way that we're going to go, in particular with the recruitment policy that we've seen this year, that he is a Wigan player moving forward. Um, Matthew, I just want to bring you in on, on, onto this about how you think that Wigan should sort of approach the last two games of the season, bearing in mind you know, playoffs are confirmed. Hopefully, second place will be confirmed. Would you like to see them? go full strength now for these last two games and get that form? Or are you happy to see the likes of youngsters like Harry Smith come in and get that opportunity? Well, it's. I remember that we were having these conversations, obviously, last season as well at the same point. And are you saying that we repeat ourselves and talk about the same thing week in, week out? How dare you? Well, I'm saying this time last year was in exactly the same position where we had all the momentum was winning at the right time again, wasn't we? After getting written off at the early on. That's what I'm saying. It's a good thing. I'll tell you who was writing <laughs> us off as well. The person who's off screen, who's on audio only. Oi! He, want, Oi. he, want, Oi. he wanted everybody out. Oi! 
Don't yeah, that's, why he's, <laughs> you, that's why he's on audio. You're only. not as innocent as you make me. Don't even start. <laughs> but yeah, I, what I, you're think, about. I wanted none of them out. Uh, not yeah. get injuries. Um, you want you want to go to heaven, John Law? I can't believe lies. that I'm looking at a table and we're in second place after where we were after that. Was it the first five games? I knew that we'd yeah. come good and find a way to get to the top four, but I, I honestly did not think we would be second at this point in the year. It's incredible. Well, Matthew, think, Wigan runner, some of us had faith. Yeah, I'm not Blind saying I didn't faith. Have faith. <laughs> I just hope we haven't already peaked. I hope that we can still go up another level because Saints will be very, very hot now after that loss against Warrington, which I'd like to add. I picked you that reckon? Two women. And, um, right. right. I wondered how long it was going to be until you started talking about betting again. Well, he's off again. <laughs> John McKinney. Uh, John McKinney's <laughs> off again, lad. Look out. <laughs> John, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> John, McC- John McCreary, <laughs> yeah. Channel Four Extraordinaire. There you go, Matthew, my mate. Good lad. God, re- God rest his soul. Um, yes. I, I, I don't know if that news has hit Mary Port yet, but he died earlier on in the year, Stu. Oh, dear. Um, yeah, well, man. <laughs> um, Matthew, talking about what, how would you like to see them go into the playoffs? So, is it a case? Are you talking about potentially peaking early? Do we take the lessons? Lessons from St Helens, they rested players and it didn't work too well for them in the Challenge Cup final. Or is it a case of best team week in, week out until we get to uh, the 12th, 14th of October, whenever the grand final is? I think we've found, found our starting team now. So obviously, I think rest a couple of players, don't play the best team yet, keep a couple of our secrets in our, to our chest until we're in the playoffs. That's that's the key, what we need to do now. It's all about, same boring when I say this, but it's just about peaking for those playoff games for me now, over 80 minutes. The way this structure works, that's yeah, when we've absolutely. got to play out now. And that's what we did. In the regular season, let's be honest, we were we weren't the best team by far. St Helens was. But then St Helens got beat over 80 minutes against Warrington and then they were forgotten. And no one's going to remember how good they were in the regular season last year. The same can happen this year as well if they just lose one game. So we just need to make sure when it's the playoffs, that's when we peak. That's it. The voice from above, Stu, how, how would you like to see it go over the next uh, next couple of weeks? Do you want do you want to see your consistent people saying here, you know, Phil says, uh, strongest squad for me, keep the winning form. Uh, Jimmy says, need to keep momentum and, and maintain form. You know, there is that danger where you start chopping and changing, and, and all of a sudden that that form goes out the window. Uh, Stu, how do you, how would you like to to see Wigan go over the next couple of weeks? Keep the same team, strong team. Let's get second. Um, I'm just a bit worried about our Salford down the road. Is it, is oh, don't worry. worry, stop about worrying it? about stuff, Stu. Don't no, all no, the things no, to worry no. about. You want me don't worry about you want me Salford. You want me to I mean, can I, I just think, say something? I think there could be dark I horses. I cannot hear Stu, and it is bliss. Yeah, honestly, he's, oh, he's, oh, he's worrying, oh, Matt. He's now worrying about Salford. <laughs> he says, and he's, he's just told you to get an haircut. Turkish barber. <laughs> and he just said yeah, Turkish uh, barber for some reason. Right. All of Let's the not talk right. about the Turkish yeah. barber. How funny would it be? He set fire to my ears. Do you, is that normal to get your ears set on fire? Yeah, that's what they do. Why? Stu says, "Yeah, that's what they do." This, oh, this is enough. this is such good viewing. The fact that I've got to tell you what he's saying. It's, Go on, right, Stu. Quite, that's just normal, there. isn't it? Stu, like even when, you're even you're when he's sure. with us, that's what happens. Sure. Right, I've, I've, I've muted sure. Matt. M- Matt can talk for as much as he wants, but he's muted now. So go on, Stu. You. you tell us how you would like things to happen over the next couple of weeks. Um, finish second, you know what I mean? Um, uh, but how funny would it be if uh, Warrington dropped out the playoffs? Can't see it, but you just never know. I would love to see it happening. <laughs> it's all he's going on about at the moment, Stu. He keeps saying Warrington will miss out. Do you think Warrington will miss out? I hope Warrington will miss out. I think they might, you know. I hope they do. <laughs> I hope they do. It's great. Don't tell Dave. But though, we know they're going to say, well, it was our year. Well, maybe it was your year, but you didn't win the league. So jog on. Do you know what I mean? You are, yeah. I had, thanks thanks for that, Stu. I've brought Matt back in now so he can, uh, he can Thank speak. Thank you. Um, I, Stu, I do worry about you a little bit, the amount that you worry Why? about things. You were worrying about <laughs> everything at the start of the season. You wanted everybody gone. And now of all the things to worry about, you're worried about Salford. Yeah. 
I think playing well. Be Dark horse. They're, 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 playing, they're playing well, but don't yeah. worry about yeah. them. And, no, you know, I'm Arsenal saying it could be a dark horse. Around the dark park. horse to look out for. That's what I'm if saying. Beat, dark horse to look out beat for. If they beat us, don't worry about it, Stu, honestly. No, I'm not worried relax. about it. I'm just well, saying how, how many times have horse. they beaten us this season? Exactly. Just relax. Well, if you want to go that way, if you want to go that way... Take it easy, Stu. Have a Cadbury's caramel. Look, if you want to be that way... Right, bit of sponsorship. We haven't beat we haven't beat Stains yet, have we? But so can, can I please just raise a point? Of course, Matt. Just, just based on uh, on what Matthew said earlier about playing our strongest team, yeah. I think we have strength in youth, and and that has always been part of the Wigan thing. We bring these kind of superstars through the ranks, um, and and I think you know. Playing someone like Smith, that that is our strength. That's what we can do. Yeah, they, I agree. they won't I, be expecting him. I think Gary's made a really good point here about and this. This I think is a sensible way of doing it. Rest a few this week and then go full throttle against Castleford and, and sort of treat treat next week as the start of the playoffs. And if there's any niggling injuries, and Mark will come to you about this. Sam Powell was touching goal last week about whether he would come in. I'm just wondering whether Harry Smith's in the squad to cover for, for Sam Powell, then we might see Tommy move to nine and then Bevan French into the half like we saw off the bench. Do you, do you see that on on uh, on Friday or do you think it is an experience thing for, for Harry? I think it's more an experience thing, even though I'd like, like him to get a, a few minutes because I think we're doing well with 16, aren't we? And not, not necessarily always needing that 17 player. Not that I like that strategy. Um, George went into hooker on Sunday which when Bevan French came on, which was a very interesting thing. I don't think our attack quite was as um, fluid with with that combination working, but we were certainly pacey. Um, pa- the paciest we've been out of dummy half. Or, or he played a grand final at Hooker, didn't he? Of course, he did. Yeah, he played a grand final there, didn't he? Against uh, well, one that we didn't win anyway. Um, yeah. So yeah, his first yeah, grand sorry, final, on, weren't it? So yeah, in in terms of that, do do you think Sam Powell has become such an important player for us that if there is any doubt, it's worth for this week resting him as we've lost the Wigan runner? Oh no, he's there, he's back, he's back. He just went for a run. <laughs> was a quick one. I think if if someone is you know genuinely struggling for fitness, then I don't see any harm in resting him this week. Um, because I do like Matt. Like Matt said, our, our young players are good enough. They've proven it not just this year, but over the last five years. You know, we've mm-hmm. we've been to a grand final every one of those years, apart from 2017, and we got to the Challenge Cup final that year. And a lot of that was built on young players coming in and proving themselves. You know, 2017 it was Marshall and Hang Davies. On, what what this went year. wrong at the Challenge Cup final in 2017? Shouldn't have been a try that was allowed. If only it had gone to to the video rep. Nice segue. It went to the video yeah. ref. It went to the video ref. It was a video oh, ref that let it. us down. It was a video ref that let us down, yeah. I'll tell you what the problem was. Our chairman didn't write a strongly worded letter in the programme. That, that's, where, that's where we went wrong. <laughs> he didn't um, demand yeah. an inquiry into it. <laughs> yeah, and then persist with it even, and then release a statement to the RFL statement. Yeah, honestly, they've lost the plot then. Well, right, let's talk about... Um, well, we'll come back to the Catalans game in just a second. Um, but one thing, we, we sort of... We, we kind of got an agenda, didn't we, tonight? Which is one of the first times that we've, I think, ever done that. It's like we kind of organised ourselves. Um, under eight score free in uh, 2020 as part of the season ticket launch that we're going to have done, which is pretty incredible, really, isn't it? The, the cost that, that that'll save across the board and, and extending that up to eight, eight years of age. Um, Matthew, your, your thoughts on that and, and the benefit that will hopefully bring and you know, free, be, free for under eights, get to see the likes of Jackson Hastings, George Burgess next year. Um, your thoughts on that? It's a great idea, isn't it? It really is because it keeps it a family game. I mean, let's be honest, mm-hmm. it's a brilliant family sport, isn't it? And, I think an idea like this is going to bring more children in that will then want to, obviously, as they grow up, play rugby, go to more games, as they go through the teens. So, yeah, I, I'm really glad. Uh, you, you do see a lot of children at the games anyway, but there'll be more now and it'll be cheaper for the parents. It's all good. It's a good idea. Matthew is somebody who I think is struggling to get their children really vested back into rugby league because of the the area that you live in. Is is this something that you would like to have seen brought in a bit early, and you think that could benefit? I 
I'll tell you one thing. It's, it's 38 years too late for Stu, isn't it? Um, <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's one issue with it. But um, I, I just, I think... I, I, wish you, I honestly wish you could see him. He's just slowly <laughs> turning his head. <laughs> I I think it's, head. It's never rule out never rule out the masters, I, I, Mr. McCoy. I really do never because rule out it's, the it's not just the whole business of of kind of bringing the the kids you know to watch the game and that sort of thing, which is is huge. But also, I just think there's behaviour on the terraces has started to, to dip again, and mm. more kids there will change that. I, I really genuinely believe that. If we've got more kids mm. dotted around mm. the terraces, people will mm. think twice before, you know, sticking fireworks up each other's nostrils and and all the other stuff that they do. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I mean, I've seen that. Few, yeah, I've seen that a few times. I've always seen I've people been, putting fireworks up people's down, nostrils. It it's almost, it's not how you do it. It's yeah, an epidemic. That's, that's what I. There's a real problem in our game oh, of fireworks gosh. being put shoved up kids' noses. That's that is the problem in society today. Mark, yes. uh, the voice of reason again. Um, your thoughts on, on that? And, and uh, you know, I think the club should be applauded, shouldn't they? Forward thinking initiative yeah. that hopefully brings. It doesn't just bring the the children who are under eight in. It brings the families, doesn't it? And, and yeah. the paying paying adults with them. I wonder if it's a precursor to maybe having more Saturday and Sunday games um, next year to, to really exploit this opportunity and really make sure those those kids get to see, um, you know, become that inspired next generation and all of those things. I think you make a great point there. It's not just the kids getting in for free. What it really also helps with is parents are able to go to games, both of them Absolutely. with their kids, because, you know, that they won't have to, one won't have to stay at home. They, you know, they can both come with, with the kids, which which I think helps put numbers on the gate in, in different ways as well. I think it's I think it's a really clever idea. The press release or the uh, piece on the website that came out with this also talked about that they're looking at ways to make it more affordable for other younger fans, those fans that are maybe turning from junior season tickets into adult season tickets and making it more affordable for them. And these are things that we took on behalf of the fans to the fan engagement board early, earlier in the year and, and through last year. And I think it shows that they're listening to ideas, you know, maybe for students or for people who are starting out on the apprenticeships and those sorts of things. These these kids don't have a lot of money and probably have a lot of competing things for their attention. If you're going to make things more affordable for those guys as well, then the, the, inspire, the inspiration they get at seven eight year old to go and watch these guys it won't fade away and then when they've got to start paying for themselves when they're a little bit older if we make that more affordable too i think it's it's all really good thinking about how we can get people staying staying on the terraces for and watching wigan yeah yeah it's a no-brainer isn't it and hope, hopefully something that that works next year and we see the attendances rise the only problem is we're not going to be able to pinpoint what when the ten- attendances hopefully do rise next year, what the reason of that was, it's, we can't really pin a point on one thing. Is it the signings? Is it the price? Obviously, it will be hopefully a combination of everything. And But that'll be a nice problem to have, won't it, once, if, uh, if the attendances yeah. rise next year. Um, Mark, st- staying with yourself, um, you are our resident fan village go-to expertise. Would you like to tell us a little bit about the fan village on Friday? I d- well, I... I- you shouldn't have come to me on this unprepared because I, I can't go to the fan village on, on Friday, as, as far as I know. So I'm not sure, all, but it will be there. That's need to know. I, be, I believe that, I think that the, they've arranged a marquee for this one as well, so that in case the weather's not so um, not so perfect. And that rolls through as well from the fan village on Friday. That rolls through into Saturday when we've got the fan day, the rearranged fan day. Yeah. Um, and uh, I will be down at that, so... Come along and, and, and it, say hello to me, uh, but more importantly, right, the under Wigan 19 versus London. Yeah, the under yeah, and London's London's young kids are, are going well, um, and, and a real good boost to the game as a whole. I think so. That's that's a good prospect. But um, you got the under 19s game. I think at half twelve. Around that, you've got some first team players will be around there to say hello to and hopefully congratulate on their performances the night before. If we if we get a good win against Catalans that we all want to see, um, they've got some interactive games and stuff. So lots of stuff for families, for kids, um, yeah. you know, for those people who will be inspired by that season ticket offer next year. Let's hope. So I think it'll be I think it'll be good. Um, 
uh, the doors open around about 10 and it runs on till about four o'clock. Uh, so yeah, let's go with that. Oh, so okay. it's, it's going to be a good, good full day for everyone to get down and get some pictures. You know, the, the first team players are always really great and approachable, aren't they? And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a brilliant, I mean, that's, that's the thing about rugby league in general, isn't it? You don't get that in any other sport, really. I've just uh, got a point here of, uh, this is a really good idea by Gary and, and something that's been bypassed by pretty much everybody. Uh, Gary says tomorrow is the 20th anniversary of our last game at Central Park. Why why haven't Ooh. the club done anything uh, to celebrate yeah. that, like a rollback to admission charges, oh, uh, word, charge in 1999? What an idea. Well done, Gary. Um, it's probably a bit late to do anything. But I think it's a uh, good idea, but it just reminds all those people who don't want to go to the stadium yeah. still <laughs> maybe, about, maybe not about those days. Yeah, you know, certainly a celebration of you know a celebration of that or Central Park. I mean, it seems that feels like an opportunity missed, doesn't it? Uh, when when you yeah, think of that, true. Um, yeah, well done, Gary. It's, uh, well, twenty years since Dennis Betts. Man. Was it Dennis Betts that scored the last try at Central Park? Um, was he the first try at the JJB? We need you and don't we? You did the who, we, we the, lost yeah. the game at the We need you and so if you and that. if you and watches this. Is it like, Castleford? Really did we play Castleford? We played Castleford. Castleford. Gavin Clinch was playing for we. Yeah, well, that was the year that Vowels were Man of Steel, weren't it? Yeah, it was just an horre- absolutely horrendous game year, everything. But somebody let me know, did Dennis Betts score the last try? Come on, Stato, how do you usually know all this? Come on, Stato, come on. I, I, don't it have it. I don't have this one to hand. It was before oh, my time, Stu. Come on, man. You're letting the side down here, Mark. Come on. <laughs> I can find it on, in my, on my book, on the, on the shelf, one of the shelf, books on the shelf. <laughs> Josie says no, Pitch, no, it Mark. Josie says it wasn't. Tommy Martin scored... Chris Joint scored the last try. Who scored the last Wigan try then? We're not bothered about Chris Joint and Tommy Martin. Right. So Jason Robinson. I'm sure it's Dennis Betts. I, th- I think you I think it was different... Jason Robinson. Hold on. I, I, was it not, I think um, they all went to a different game. Was it, uh, was it not? Mm-hmm. What's his face? That's second row who went playing for Bradford and Saints and Warrington and everyone else. And not Warrington. Wait, Wakefield Lee Gilmore. assistant. Lee Gilmore. Was it not Lee Gilmore? Gilmore. Everybody's, oh. everybody's saying Tommy Martin. Right, but right. who scored the last Wigan try? Come on, people. Right. Anyway, let's talk about something I else. I think it was Stu's Lee Gilmore. Still with us. Right. T- Tony, Tony's adamant it was t- uh, Robinson. I think it was Robinson. Anyway. I, I think you're all wrong. It was before right, who my scored time. the, the fan, first try in the, the last game will, at Central the Park? Fan, the, fan, the fan day kicks off at 10, 10.30 at Robin Park Arena, by the way. 10.30. Okay. Um, fans can expect a space hopper race, an obstacle race, a passing challenge, discus and javelin. So we're making full full use of the athletics facilities that we have. A tug of war, try scoring long jump. I don't. I think that. Guess, I guess that means a dive in with the ball kind of thing, um, and obviously the player signing session. So uh, lots going on. And Stu, you'll be in the wow. fan village on Friday night, won't you? Uh, I'll have a look down there. You're, you're, I think you said you buy, if anybody down. comes up to you and recognises you, you buy them a drink. Is that what you said? Uh, water. He there. said that earlier, didn't he? Yeah, I Pint think he water. said that. Pint of water. Definitely. Pint of water, it says. Right, um, I'm conscious that we're just talking absolute gibberish and time's running on. Two things I want to talk about. Hardacre and Farrell not in the Great Britain squad, and then we'll get on to the, uh, the actual Catalans. Right, Jimmy says Bet scored the first try at the DW. I'm sure he scored a... I don't trust all of you. I think I'm right. Anyway, Matthew, uh, your thoughts on, on... I don't know if you've seen the Great Britain squad this this week, but the, the big admissions, really, from a Wigan point of view, uh, Zach Hardacre seems to be overlooked because of his off-field thing. Uh, so, you know, whatever he's done in the past, all of that. Uh, but Liam Farrell, I don't know what Liam Farrell has to do to get into that Great Britain squad. Are, are you surprised to not see him there, Matthew? I, I hadn't seen the squad. The first person mentioned, I'm not surprised at. The second one, Farrell, I am very surprised that he's not. Like you just said, what has he got to do? Yeah. Since he's come back into the Wigan squad, as when things have turned around for us, what more could yeah. he have possibly done since his return from injury? It's madness, that, isn't it? I don't know why he's not in the team. Um, I just want to All I'm saying in. is that someone doesn't like Ginger. Could be that as well, Matt. Well, I'm he reminds just Wayne Bennett of his youth, apparently. He doesn't. He just doesn't like him, does he? It's simple as that. Yeah. Wayne Bennett thinks but... he's too small or whatever. Mm-hmm. Wayne Wayne Bennett's a super coach, but he's wrong on this one. Best second yeah, row he's... in the country doesn't get in the squad. It's it's pathetic. Mm-hmm. Guys, so can I just say, Matthew, 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 Matthew. Matthew Johnson, 
that scored the last try at Central Park. Ooh. Was it Paul Johnson? No, I've, I've told everybody it's Dennis Betts, but nobody's agreeing with me. It's I'm, not, I'm, it wasn't Dennis Betts. It was Dennis Betts, I'm telling you. He, he scored at the JJB. He, he was the first keep, scorer keep at the JJB. Keep talking about whatever we were just talking about and I'll find yeah. this out. Well, I don't trust whatever anybody's going to say until I find that that is a fact. Um, so, yeah, we're talking about Liam Farrell. Matt, your, your thoughts on Liam Farrell? What, what I've suggested today, I know it's the Great Britain and Ireland squad, but I think Liam, he's, Liam Farrell's been con- consistently overlooked by the England squad since Wayne Bennett come in. I think there's got to be a bit of Irish in there, hasn't there? And I think he should just be, become Irish from next year and get himself in the World Cup for Ireland. So, so long as it's rugby league and not rugby union, then yes, that, that's fine. Um, yeah. But Bennett... Clearly, just uh, doesn't like him. He's, he's, you know, and I, I think the point Mark made has been made before. Bennett thinks he's too small. Um, as far as Hardacre is concerned, I, I think that's just a, a game for Wigan. Um, I think that you know to be able to say Hardacre gets to play a, a full season after playing this season with a proper off season, um, I. I think that's that's going to work in our favour. Um, can I can I just say we, we need to bow down to Matthew's knowledge here because the last try scorer for Wigan at Central Park was Paul Johnson, and he's he's obviously googled that off screen, but we'll give him the credit. Yeah, he went about a bit on it as well. How much money did he put on it? <laughs> but yeah, Paul Johnson, the last Wigan try scorer at Central Park. Sorry, Matt, go on, carry on. But Dennis Betts was the first at the at the DW or whatever it was called, JJB back then. Did, was Dennis Betts definitely the first? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I'm asking, how much do I win? I think I oh, got the moral victory. Do we think that I, I, the people I, I that have been picked I, in the I, England I, squad ahead of Hardacre are better than Hardacre? Or, sorry, the Britain squad? No. Well, I think, I think the problem that you've at the got squad, at the minute, though, this is the, the fullbacks that are in there. Jamie Shaw's clearly not a patch on Zach Hardacre in any sort of form, but it's definitely not in this season's form. The last two months, Hardacre it, I, has been fantastic. But he, squad, it's, though, it, it, it's a sham. It's an absolute sham, though. This isn't the squad. No, it's like, not the what's squad. The point, what's the, the point of squad. announcing them and then saying, oh, we need to put the NRL players in later, as if like, they're living on another like, planet? Like just it's so that these that players can meet in. up and have a coffee together and become friends in case they do have know, to room like, with each other. H- half of these players that are in the squad aren't going to make the actual squad. So just yeah. meet, meet up with 14 people rather than 24 people or whatever it is. I'm, sh- I'm sure it's easier to get in a costa with fewer people than it is with more people. If well, I would say coffee. it's in case there's injuries and stuff, but actually they've picked people who are injured, haven't they? Like O'Loughlin and Austin and <laughs> um, Stevie Ward. <laughs> Steve, Stevie Ward is a talking like I, I don't know what I think he's there and he, obviously Stevie Ward's done a lot of fantastic work with mental health and things like that I he's just wonder whether he's, going when he's, as fit, a, but he's never fit I think he's going as the counsellor like what <laughs> how, how can Stevie Ward possibly go <laughs> in, on a great Britain Lions well. tour like it's just that's bonkers but the whole thing is like announcing this train on squad is an absolute sham it's pointless like yeah, you're basically yeah, yeah. you're getting people's hopes up like Jamie Shaw is never going to play for Great Britain. Like, let's be honest. Like J- Jamie <sighs> Shaw knows that. Right now, you are desperate to prove you wrong, Sean. <laughs> that. Well, I mean, I'm sure he wants to prove people a bit more important than me wrong, but like Jamie Shaw will never play for Great Britain. He wanted Britain to score that try at Wembley, but Josh Charley said no, mate. So you yeah, know. Andy took the ball off. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, sorry, Matt. You were sort of mid floor about random stuff. Go on. Can you remember what you're talking about? Neil Farrell being Irish. Uh, yeah, I, I think, I don't know. I, I do really feel for for Farrell. I think you know. I do think what, like you say, what has he got to do? Um, and it it would be nice if if he could play for Ireland and Ireland won the World Cup, but that's not going to happen, is it? What about, like, what about Jamaica? I don't think he'd qualify for Jamaica. Oh, oh, yeah. Why not? I'm, I'm, I don't. I don't understand what you mean, Matt. And um, the the voice above, 
Uh, Stu, your thoughts on... I know you're a big motor fan, so you're probably not bothered in, in Great Britain, but no. uh, Stu, you, you your thoughts on Farrell not being in there? The only thing... I say the good thing for Wigan. And the reason why is because you look at the pack, it's always NRL-based. I think there's only really Chris Hill and Lockers that you could say would really be in. And I think it's a really good thing for Wigan, really, if he doesn't get in there. It's like the Tompkins scenario when he didn't get picked and he come back and he did a good off-season <laughs> trail. And so it's like that, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Um, I'm sorry, I'm laughing, at, I'm laughing at Spencer's comment saying that Liam, Liam Farrell qualifies for Jamaica because his nan likes lilt. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, to be honest with you, in rugby league, that, that's probably Ooh. enough. Uh, uh, who who was it who just basically made up that they were Welsh and got to play the World Cup? Was it more? It was Morley's brother. What was his first name? Oh, was it Paul Morley? Chris Morley? I can't remember. Anyway, he made up that he was Welsh and just played. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's that is rugby league. Um. So, Stu, you think it'll be good for Wigan because he gets a full pre-season under his belt? Correct. Absolutely. Excellent. You know, as, like I said, when you look at the squad, Sean, there's not many uh, Super League forwards get in. It's always yeah. an RL. You know what I mean? I wish I'd made that point. Switch out, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's good for Wigan all round. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Matt, you're no so problem. bitter. <laughs> Oh man, what's wrong with you tonight? Uh, Spencer, Spencer says Reese Morley. Uh, I suppose, yeah, because of his Welsh name. Right, score predictions for Friday before I completely lose the plot. Uh, Stu, the voice off the screen, what are you going for for, for Friday night? We're going against Catalans. 32 22. 32 22? Wow. Uh, give us your first try score as well, Stu, just for the sake of it. Uh, Zach. Okay, so that, he sounds so enthused to you. It's uh, it's no, it's I inspiring, am. to be honest. I am. Uh, Matt, sure, before we go, I'm, I'm, you know I mean? I'm going to leave Matthew till the end because he's going to tell us all sorts of odds and everything because of his sponsorship with Paddy Power. Uh, but Matt, your prediction for Friday? What you asking me? Are you, are you in a mood now? Yeah, are you in a mood I, now? Oh, you? So you actually want to know what I think? Okay, I'll tell you. Um, I reckon. Remember, I've got the mute Wigan, button. Wigan twenty-eight, Catalan fourteen. I thought you were going to say exactly the same as Stu. Then uh, first try scorer That's from so- you, Matt. Oh, uh, Gildart. Nice and sensible, uh, Mark. To make sure it's uh, consistent with SLP. I've just done that, yeah. Wigan by, Wigan by 16, so let's say 30 points to 14 in that sort of region. I'll, I'll go with uh, f- first try. Let's say... Who's due one? Who, who hasn't scored for a while? Hard, let's Navarrete. go Hardacre. <laughs> Hardacre, yeah, Navarrete never scored still. Um, yeah, nice, sensible. My prediction... I don't. Why is everybody being sort of like suggesting that they're going to be relatively close? This is the hallmarks of another 50-pointer for Wigan. Catalans are on holiday. They can't really qualify for the playoffs. We put, did we put fifty on them earlier on in the year before the before the new camp game at home? And um, they're, oh, they're yeah, on holiday. Just scored a hat trick. Well, we'll get fifty this time. So it'll be Wigan fifty-two, uh, Cat- Catalans eight. No, after, after what one, has been one. said in the media about the attitude of their players, um, and also well, that's going to that's that's really that... inspire them, isn't it? And do I, I, I think it'll fire them up. And, you, you know, you've got Tomkins, you've got um, McLaurin coming back. I, I think they will, they'll be better than you think they'll be. No, yeah, but some of the players have been playing and some of the performances <laughs> of some of the players. I mean, Lewis Tierney's become a championship winger. I don't know how he's playing in Super League the way he's played the last few months. He just seems to drop more tries than he scores. And some of the forwards just aren't putting the shift in, Matt. But I think it's that time of year, though, isn't it? You don't have big blowout scores necessarily at this time of year. It's going to be raining, I, I probably. Think, it's I think going I've, to be a bit I've, miserable. I've proven you all wrong. I think I got the whole KR one at forty odds right. I think I got another one pretty right when I've just when I've gone when I've gone for it and I've told you that it'll be a big score. I don't think I've been wrong yet. Mm. Just saying. Mm. All right, Mister Paddy Power in the bottom corner there. <laughs> Where's Can the I value? <laughs> 
Before I make my prediction, yeah. Uh, yeah. if I do Catalans win, do I get banned the next the next game? I'm cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll be yeah. I'll be asking for a, a drugs test from you. Okay, right. Do okay. inquiry. I won't say Catalan's going to win, but my prediction is going to be Wigan are going to win, but Wigan are only going to win by less than six. It's going to be a close game and low scoring because of the rain. That's my prediction. Well, either you're all wrong or I'm going to look like a bloody idiot. Most of us have said we're going to win by three scores, haven't we? Yeah. It's good winning I, I just, I, I just win think that when... Win yeah, you just never happy, are you, Sean? Not really, until I'm right. You know, I'm still convinced Dennis Betts scored that try. I'm going to look. I bet he didn't even play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, he was in Auckland at the time. Yeah, who scored the first try in the last game at Central Park? Jason Robinson, brilliant. He didn't score right in that. that game. He didn't score a try right, in that game. Here we go. Robinson sparked Wigan's opening try, breaking out from his own back line, back line set off on a 30-yard run before releasing Dennis Betts to go under the post. I just got it the wrong way around. You know, it's, it's, it's important trivia, that. Who scored the first try in the last game at Central Park? That's a, that's a question that will come up often and often. Yeah, uh, we all got it not- wrong. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. That could win uh, you right. a million pounds, that Mr Lawless. Warn a friend, don't forget. Well, it wouldn't be funny in you, Stu, I know that. Um, <laughs> I don't be like that, no. Well, I'd have to ring the yeah. local pair phone to get through, wouldn't I? Um, right, Matt, you, you've threatened, even though you've been very grumpy tonight, you threatened that you might have <laughs> you, you might have a, something for us. Are you going to produce that or not? Did you get time just... to write a, a, write a rap? I know that sounds om- ominous. Did you write a rap? No, Did you... I've not written a rap because raps are so passe now that, that this year it is all about folk music. <laughs> oh, right, okay. <laughs> okay. So I have written the ballad of round 28. Do I'm you want to hear it? I'm going to solo <laughs> Yeah. Um, first okay. of all, there's a button just above your name here that says celebrate. I'm just going to press this button because I don't know what it does. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Uh, are we ready? Oh, just put a lot of, yeah, just put a lot of random emojis on the screen. Yeah, go on, Matt. Nice. It's over to you. Okay, then. <clears throat> the Ballad of Round 28. <clears throat> me, 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 me. I, I, I will warn you, my singing is shit, so you have to cope with that. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Now Eamon McManus, he forgot his manners, as why I threw in the spanners, and Saints they went marching out of the cut, they lost the game in the ruck, they came well unstuck. He thought (laughs) they'd been tricked, he blamed poor Robert Hicks, but he just sounded thick. And made the RFL sound quite good. That's not easy to do. So Ralph says thank you. Don't feel too primrose and blue. Holbrook resigned. Eamon said that is fine. So long as you finish your time. So it's probably very awkward. Saints are on shaky ground. Not much fun to be found, even though Eamon's a clown. And Red VTV, filming drunk misery. (laughs) I'd pay a licence fee to see a bit more of that. And maybe we will, but we'll have to wait till the grand final. That's all they'll score. (laughs) Now, we went to Wakey, where the paintwork is flaky. <laughs> and for goodness sakey, the fans have all got one eye. So their depth perception is naff. They can't see a forward pass. And their heads are stuck up their aspects of the game. <laughs> Seemed really quite lame. Bruff's a pantomime dame, but we stuck in there right to the end. 
<laughs> we came away with the win. We got soaked to the skin. But still we all grin with a mighty wigging. There you go. A bit of folk music for you. I mean, wow. I've, I've honestly never been... <laughs> I've never wanted to see the rap back so much. I said, bring back the rap. <laughs> and that's saying something. But well done, Matt. Well done. You could be that next, you know, the Saints fan in, in his van doing the Mambo number no. five thing. Is that, what you, is that what you're getting for? Is that what you're going for? That, that's, what, that's, that's my biggest dream. <laughs> that was your inspiration. Right. What a bizarre show and what a long show as well. Um, the, the fact that you're even classing that as folk music, I think, is quite interesting as well. Um, Stu, the voice off the screen, thank you for joining us. Uh, have a safe journey down to Wigan on Friday. Uh, don't be too grumpy. And like we said, if you recognise Stu, uh, he said that he will buy you a pint. So just go over and say, your Stu off Wigan Fan TV, and he will buy you a pint. Uh, he's promised that. So thanks, Stu. That's why he insisted on being off the screen when you said yeah. that. So. Yeah, you need, to remember, you need to try to remember what he looks like. Uh, He'll be Matthew, wearing his guys. Big Matthew ginger beard. The, the Wigan runner. Uh, keep going with your runs and, and, and being an inspiration to us all that you are. And well done on Wigan 10K as well at the weekend. I know we didn't get a chance to, to talk about that. Um, and your competition's live on your page. So if anybody fancies a couple of tickets to the Wigan uh, Wigan Catalans game on Friday, um, just go on to the Wigan on, Runner page. Mark, just want to thank you. Everyone, we're going to run the 10K next year together, all the Wigan fans TV. You guys don't know it yet, but we're all running the 10K yeah. together. You've got us being beaten up by the Wigan dodgeball team. Like I still need to talk to you about that. Uh, and now we're doing the 10K together. Right, OK. We'll have, yeah, we'll have a yeah. talk about that later. Uh, Mark, thank you uh, for taking the time again. And SLP this week, give us a give us a little glimpse and, and a little tease. If you if you skip to about an hour in, you get to listen <laughs> to half an hour of us having a go at Eamon McManus and Saints and talking in depth about how how come no one was talking about Hicks being potentially affected by what happened three weeks ago that apparently happened a week ago um, until a week after the final. Amazing. Yeah. Good point. So you get a lot of that, basically. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy it. And Matt, um, obviously, you've been incredibly grumpy tonight, mainly because I think schools have gone back. So, I mean, do you want to do you want to release? Do you want to do your goodbye? Do you want to just get something off your chest? I don't know what. Come on, group therapy. What's what's the matter? I just need a hug. Okay. Well, just you've got Ro Romain Navarrete's shirt behind you. Just, just give that a cuddle tonight, and, and it'll be all right. Okay. Well, thank you for taking the time to join us. Thanks everybody for watching, uh, and we will see you next week when we preview the final uh, regular home game of the season against Castleford. Thanks for joining us, everybody.